So if you don't know, we have a weekly newsletter here at Tech Hut, which covers some wonderful technology and open source news. This is that newsletter right here. Now, every once in a while, there are so many cool things to cover that it is worth a whole dedicated video, and this is one of those instances. We have some stunning improvements within the development of the Cosmic desktop environment for Pop! OS, a new privacy-focused phone getting some rather decent funding, Firefox 119 is coming with some rather impressive features, and we've gotten some specific release dates with the upcoming Fedora 39. Now this video is sponsored by Akamai Connected Cloud. You can use them to create your very own Linode and spin up a Linux instance in the cloud. Whether if you are a tinkerer and you just want to play around or you want to actually deploy a production service and use it to host your websites, game servers, whatever you really need. If you could do it on Linux, you could do it on a Linode. They have a bunch of one-click installers that makes it really easy to get up and going. And I do have a lot of separate tutorials on the Akamai Developer YouTube channel if you're interested in checking those out. If you use the link down below and you are a new user, you can get yourself a $100 60-day credit. Now with that, let's get into some of the good old GNU news. Now, first up, on Friday, October 20th, the PopOS blog posted their October Cosmic Updates. And the thing that stands out the most by far is their new lock screen and login screen right here. It is a rather impressive and unique concept, gives you a lot of kind of a functionality without having to log completely into your system. We can see here, of course, the time date. That's pretty standard. We have our battery percentage. The login is over here. Plus we have toggles for accessibility, keyboard layout, users, settings, sleep, I believe, restart and shut down. And it looks like if I scroll down here, there is a prototype. So the password is test. So let's click on this. Ooh, very nice. The graphics are loading. So here is our keyboard layout. Here we could switch users. Jane Doe is the test. If I click on this, oh, nothing happens as of yet. <laughs> right here we have our accessibility stuff, not doing anything either. Again, this is just a demo. Test, enter and then it will log you in. And uh, one of the other changes that I do know off the top of my head is right, oh, it's not letting me click it. So th this isn't uh, very functional. It's wanting me to click the power, which here I can log out and probably get back to that screen. Cool stuff, it will be linked down below nonetheless. And of course, this is Cosmic, so this is going to be customizable, obviously the background, but if we look over here, we can see some uh, color changes going with a really nice Doom red theme going on, so it's gonna be really nice seeing how people get that and play around with it. We have the new applet for the Cosmic Tiling. If you are familiar with using the current kind of GNOME implementation of Cosmic, you know that it is one of the very best ways to use tiling on the GNOME desktop environment. Here is their applet for it, so we can see the shortcuts or the uh, keyboard shortcuts key bindings to navigate Windows move windows, adjust your gaps, which I always do. We have the active hint, which I believe is the kind of border outline. So it's really nice that's gonna be there and easily accessible to us. And there's really a lot more going on here. We have a lot of information on very specific changes, including the UI development. Using a tool called Taffy, they're able to implement new grid layout widgets, allowing them to create rather complex layouts within applications using minimal code, as said by the Cosmic Engineer, Michael. Within our newsletter, everything we talk about does have a link to the specific source at the bottom if you do want to get more information on what we're talking about. So now the privacy-focused phone Marina, which apparently is some kind of eel, they pulled $156,000 on Kickstarter. It's going to be a de-Google phone using the operating system EOS. This is the source from The Verge, but I'm more interested in seeing the actual Kickstarter page. Here it is. Marina 2, switch on your privacy. So, so it does look like they're going to have a hard button privacy switch here. $171,000, so even more since uh, the newsletter was published. Okay, so there's two physical switches. It has a privacy switch to disconnect the cameras and microphones and a disconnection switch to completely disable connectivity. That honestly is very handy to have that hard switch on the phone. Where are the specs? Ah, here's some camera specs. So 64 megapixel, not too bad. Uh, 13 megapixel, it's not specifying, but I would assume uh, standard wide angle, uh, maybe macro photography. 25 megapixel front facing, that is decent. Okay, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. Would like to see more, but it does have a SD card option. Pretty large phone at 1080p, 4000 milliamp battery. 
CPU is eight core at 2.1, and this is probably four efficiency cores at two gigahertz again. Not 100% sure this will, like everything, be linked down below. And here's everything you get. You get a case that's always really nice when providers do that. And it's coming in at $500, which honestly seems kind of in range with the specifications we're getting and the fact that it is a brand new phone. And it looks like we can get it for $100 off or 100 euros off at the moment. Next up, we have the release of Firefox 119 with Chrome extension import. No, this is not going to give you the ability to install like Chrome extensions directly. What it's going to do is a vast majority of the extensions available in Chrome are also available on the Firefox add-on section. So if you choose to do that in the initial setup along with your browsing history and whatnot, it will find those extension extensions for you and add that directly from their add-on store. If it isn't cross-compatible, it won't do it. And it looks like Firefox is broadly becoming a pretty decent PDF editor with the ability to add images to PDF simply by dragging and dropping them into Firefox while having a PDF open. In addition to that, we have the ability to text, well, to add text and draw on PDFs. That is definitely more functionality than some other browsers. And then we have Firefox view. If you use Firefox, you noticed that little Firefox icon that you can click and get their Firefox view. They're trying to add a bit more functionality to that. I remember when that first came out, a lot of people were up in arms. Granted, you could uh, right click on it and remove it. Now it is showing you an overview of your tabs open in every window browsing history. All the active devices if you use Firefox sync, which is actually a pretty decent feature if you trust that. And of course, if you're interested in this re latest release, there's a wonderful article on OMG Ubuntu, which goes into a little bit more detail of what we covered here. And now Fedora release dates. Fedora is one of my favorite operating systems. It was my number one favorite for the longest time. I have become uh, rather um, a connoisseur of uh, Debian of sorts. It seems to be the uh, default desktop I go with. I still like to go with Ubuntu server. I'm just so used to the apt package manager, but Fedora is great especially if you're looking for more frequent releases as it feels like Fedora 38 just came out and here we are getting the uh, Fedora 39 release date specifically. The fact that it should have been published on October 24th, but because of the discovery of some last minute bugs. So the new release date is going to be October 31st on Halloween. And there's a little side note down here. It's a, a really, Really important side note at the bottom of this newsletter, it is the official release date for KDE Plasma 6. Something I am really looking forward to. The actual author of this newsletter is uh, Niccolo. He does some fantastic work for the KDE team, so I'm excited to see what him or what he and some of the other team members have been able to accomplish. 28th of February, the very last day of the shortest month of the year, is going to be the official release date if uh, there's no major hiccups or anything like that. Alpha, November 8th, that is coming up very soon. The first beta coming out just under a month later, November 4th, which this beta date is the day I'm personally excited for. That's when I'm going to install it and really do a deep dive and make some uh, videos about some of the new features and whatnot that is coming up. And then the release candidate, January 10th, that is a very important day. And then of course, KDE Gear and all the other major KDE tools, such as their frameworks, will follow this release schedule as well. So with that, that is the news. If you do head over to this page and right here in the bottom corner, click on that subscribe. There is an option to donate. Of course, you do not have to. Just go ahead, pop in your name, your email, choose the free one and you will get the newsletter sent to you. If you want to support us directly, you can subscribe to it. I try to make exclusive content here or there. I'm definitely gonna be picking up on that next year as I'm uh, finishing up university this quarter. I'll have a lot more time to focus a little bit more on this. So I'm really, Really looking forward to that. With all that, check out Akamai Connected Cloud. They're awesome. And I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.